Hey everyone, welcome back to Gap University. I'm Colby Cox. So over the last few weeks, we've been bringing you carriers and carrier products, especially with FNG, one of our newer carriers. Um, and so what we wanted to do this time and going forward with a couple of videos, we're gonna have a series on insurance and annuity terms and definitions. You know, when getting a life insurance policy or an annuity, there's a lot of definitions and terms. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces. And so what, we, what you wanted to do is just to take some of these pieces, uh, take some of these terms and define it for you. Okay, so that way, no matter what you come across with pretty much most carriers, some of these terms <coughs> can seem, excuse me, seem familiar to you. Okay, so we're only going to go over 12. I've got my list right here. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. These are just the first 12 I wrote down. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, and you're going to see these, most of them, across both an insurance policy or an annuity policy. Okay, so the first one is, and I'm going to write it right here, is a cap. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple, pretty standard across the board with most index uh, life and annuity policies. A cap is the max you can make depending on the market change. Okay, so if your, if this example is your cap is 10%, but the market does 12%, the max you can get is that 10%, okay? Because that's your cap. Let's just say your cap is, just keep it at 10, but the market does five, then you get five, because you only get what the market does up to whatever your cap is, okay? So that's all it is. A cap is that max amount that you can earn, um, for that strategy, okay? Uh, the next one is another very common one. It's called, I'm gonna abbreviate it, it's called a participation rate. So I'm just gonna put par rate. Otherwise, you're gonna see terrible handwriting trying to write on this. A par rate, a participation rate. This is a rate where uh, how much do you participate or partake in the market change growth, okay? So let's just say your par rate is 50%. Okay, which means that if the market does a hundred, you get fifty because you partake in fifty percent of that market change. Now, if your par rate is one hundred forty, and the market does ten, you get fourteen. <laughs> I know this market one hundred man, man. If the hundred, if the market did one hundred percent, you're living in a very good day. Um, but again. You participate right here at the 140%. Whatever the market does, you're going to get 140% of it, which is why if the market does 10, you get 14. If the market did 100, you'd get 140. Okay, so pars can be below 100%, above 100%. A lot of strategies will have both a par and a cap. I mean, let's just say your cap is 5, but your participation rate's uh, 140, and the market does 10. You could have gotten 14%, but because your cap is 5, that's the most you can get. So meaning if the market did 1, you get 1.4 because your cap is 5 and you get that 140% par. Um, so again, that's what it is. What do you partake in? What do you participate in in that market change? Okay. The next couple are different strategies that you'll see. Um, now, it doesn't really matter what index they're part of, S&P, NASDAQ, Barclays, it doesn't really matter. But the first one, and the most common, is called point to point. Okay? Point to point. What does this mean? So if we took this time right here, let's just say today, or let's just, we'll keep it simple, we'll go 1, 1, 21. And the market's going to do a bunch of this, right? It's going to do a bunch of that. And then wherever it lands right here on 1, 1, 22, this is an annual, okay, point to point. But what they're looking at is what is the change from this point this year to this same point but next year? That's an annual. You could also have monthly point to points where, so if you go monthly, we'll just abbreviate that because my pen right is terrible. And you go 1, 1, 21, and it starts here. Ah. And then the market does something. And it ends here on 2, 1, 21. That is a monthly point to point. So all we're looking at is from one point to the next point, whether it's annual, 
whether it's monthly, what is the index change? Okay, and again, with these strategies, you might have a point to point with a cap. You might have a point to point with a par. Okay, but all a point to point is is one point to the next point, either monthly, it could be semi annually, annually, whatever the case that strategy may be. Most common being annual. What is it from that point to the next point that next year? What's the change? Okay, that isn't is a point to point. You also have a point to average. Okay, so obviously we have this point right here. The market's going to do this, do this, right? And then you're going to have this point right there. Okay, so from one point to the next, what it does is it takes the average from that point to the next point. What is that average? And then what you get credited is whatever it started at, right? Whatever it started at to the average. Okay, so remember point to point was from one point this year to one point that same point next year. Point to average is one point today to the average for that year. Okay, now I haven't seen a lot of this lately. There were some, a couple carriers and a couple policies that had this, but uh, lately on the newest products, I haven't seen much point to average. Um, a lot of point to point, a lot of monthly, but not so much point to average. Okay, another erase that. Uh, another type of strategy you might see is called a declared rate or a specified specified rate. Okay, the one the way this works is. Your specified rate might be 5%, or, okay, let's just say it's 5. If the market is positive in any way, whether it's 10% or half a percent, you get whatever that declared rate is. Okay, so if the market is 0 0.000001 in the positive direction, you get 5. You're going to be credited 5% for that strategy, okay? That's what a declared or a specified rate is. The market could do 11 you're just going to get five. If the market is zero or negative in any way, you get zero. Because again, we're talking about indexing, and with indexing, you never lose. So that's what a declared specified rate is. You then also have what's called a spread, a spread rate. A spread, the way it works is, let's just say my spread is, and I'm going to do one that I just saw recently, three and a half. This means that Whatever the market does, you're going to subtract that three and a half from it, and that's what you get credited. So the market's got to do at least three and a half for you to, uh, again, we're indexed, so you're not going to lose, but you won't make anything still at three and a half. Anything above three and a half, you subtract three and a half, you subtract the spread from it, that's going to give you your rate. So if your spread is three and a half, but the market does 10, right, you get 6.5. You've got to subtract that spread from it. And again, each carrier is going to have their own spreads depending on what the strategy is. You also have some strategies that have a floor rate. Okay, now, if we're talking about an index product, product IUL, indexed annuity, the floor is pretty much always guaranteed zero. Okay, there might be some strategy charges that change that, but the index strategies are always going to have at least the floor is zero. But there are some strategies that what they do is they take a little bit of your upside with some caps. And they may say, we'll give you a floor of one. So you know that no matter what, you're going to make 1% on that strategy, even if that, if that strategy is negative for the year, okay? So that's what a floor is. And then you have another one that's very common, and I'm just going to leave it right here before I erase everything, is a fixed rate. Pretty simple. Most people know what a fixed rate is. It's the rate that no matter what's in there, you're only going to get that. Most of the time, it's going to be commonly around that 1%, maybe 1.5%, but the money that's in there, that's what it's going to make no matter what the market does, okay? So the next thing you're going to see in most life policies that have cash accumulation is accumulation value. Your accumulation value is the your cash value. It's what you have accumulated, right, <laughs> um, within your policy, all right? So uh, you're paying your money or you did a rollover and it's going to have an accumulation value, and that's your total account value. Okay, but then you also have what's called a surrender value. Your surrender value is what you would be have access to right away. 
if you took everything out. Okay, so all life policies and annuity contracts have surrenders. Okay, so let's just say I have 100K in accumulation value, but my surrender charge is 2,000. That means my surrender value would be 98,000. Okay, so I can't get all 100 because I have a surrender charge. So my surrender value is whatever my accumulation is minus my surrender charge. Okay, so um, now be careful with that accumulation and surrender. They're not always the same, especially in the beginning years. Okay, if you've got a 10 year surrender, accumulation and surrender won't be the same for the first 10 years. If you've got a seven year surrender, accumulation and surrender won't be the same. Okay, so make sure <coughs> you're aware of that. Erase here. Last two things, and you're going to see these in life policies only, um, are death benefit options. Now, annuities do have death benefits, so I'm not saying that, but we're talking about death benefit options. There's three of them. Uh, and Well, let's just say that there's two most common, and then there's a third that some carriers all right, so you have death benefit option A, B, and C. What is A? This is a level policy. This is where, okay, if I sign up for half a million dollars of death benefit, okay, it's always going to be half a million. It's not going to change even though I'm putting money into it, especially if it's a cash value policy. That's a level policy where my death benefit never change changes. A B is considered increasing. What this is, is this is your death benefit plus your cash value that you put into it. So if my death benefit is half a million and I put in 100000 that means my total death benefit is 600 k Because you take the money I put in, which is this 100 k you add it to my death benefit, it's all on top of it, and then you get a 600 k In the next video, we will go in-depth on level and increasing because there's a lot of confusion on which one's better, which one's not. There's not a better either or. It's really kind of based on client uh, prerogative. Um, but there's one that we prefer because of cost of insurance that we'll get into in another video. Uh, and then C, all it is is a combination. It is B to A. We're going to start off with an increasing death benefit. And at some point, we're going to level it off. Okay. You see a lot of this when you look at IULs that have uh, some type of SRAs, low mental retirement account action to it. Okay, you have somebody who's paying their money, paying their money, and then at 65 they retire, so they level off their policy. Okay, so it's a increasing to a level policy. Uh, and then the last thing, and honestly, I don't even really need to erase this, is we're just going to put it right here, is called face amount. The face amount, find it. Oh man, if I could write, uh, all this is is your death benefit. So your death benefit and your face amount are the exact same thing. Um, you can hear it interchanged, no matter if it's death benefit or face amount. It's the exact same thing. Okay, um, and so that is the uh, all the definitions and terms we're going to go over for today. Um, if you have any questions, like always, please put it in the comments. Send us a message. Uh, if you have different terms that you want to see. Uh, in future videos because we're going to do this series over the next few weeks. If you have terms or things that you've seen in contracts or policies that you want to see, make sure you send it to us. We will try to go over it. Other than that, uh, otherwise we will just go over different ones that we've come across the most. All right. So y'all all have a great day.